everyone, this is Robin. Welcome to my channel, MyPinkStamper.com. I hope you are having a wonderful day. I'm stopping in with a quick video for you today. This is a simple card that anyone can make and I'm going to throw in just a little fun fold idea. It's not really even a fold, it's just cutting your card base a little bit different. It's one of the, my most favorite things to do right now with card bases and with my cards to just switch them up a little bit. But if you're in a hurry and you need a birthday card or a thank you card, this is the perfect design for you. So we'll go ahead and jump in and get started. If you're in the United States, everything you see pictured today, it's available in my shop, shopmypinkstamper.com, and I'm Robin Cardin. Okay, so let's go ahead and I will tell you everything you need. It'll be on the screen with the item code, as well as any sizes for the cardstock that I've already cut. So, okay, let's go ahead with our stamping. And we are going to stamp on this piece of basic white cardstock. And this is just a scrap piece that I had have right now, so it's not a special size. So if you're saving your little scraps, which I highly recommend you do, um, you can use them for just different projects like this. So we'll go ahead and we're going to be stamping Coastal Cabana. And we're going to be using the top of the ice cream. Now, the ice cream punch has been on back order, back and forth, and it's finally in stock. So this is the first time to grab it if it's been on your wish list or if you're new to paper crafting, this is a really good time to pick it up. And it's great for beginners as well as advanced paper crafters. Okay, so we're going to stamp the top using the Coastal Cabana ink pad. And I'm going to stamp it near the, let's see, which way does this stamp? So I always look at my our punch. I always look at my punches and I see what direction they punch before I stamp. That way I can use my paper without waste. So I'm going to stamp that off to the left and then I can go ahead and just punch it out like this. You just line it up and punch it towards you. Okay, pull that out. And now we're going to be stamp our, yeah, stamping and punching the cone next. So for the cone, I'm going to take crumb cake ink, and if you've never opened our ink pads, they're super fun to open. They're a crafting experience uh, in themselves. So you just lift them up, lift it up like this, flip it around, and then it locks in place. Now sometimes you'll want to create using this as a palette, and you can just squeeze it while it's shut, and you can get ink on the inside of your lid, and then you can use our tools, or even just a paintbrush with a little bit of water for water coloring. So it's a nice little tip for you and then they just click into place like that. Now I'll go ahead and take my ice cream cone. Now I want this to be a little bit lighter so I'm going to ink it up in our crumb cake and then I'm going to stamp it on our background and then I'll go ahead and let me make sure that I stamp it there so I utilize my paper. Oh uh, it's upside down. <laughs> okay so I'm going to stamp it like this. Okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little hatch, I think that's called a hatch. It's not really, it's just more of the uh, design of an ice cream cone, a sugar cone. And I'm going to also stamp this off because I just want it to be, a, I want it to be a little bit lighter than it normally would be with full strength crumb cake. And now I can set this aside. And we'll take our punch and we'll go ahead and just punch this out right here. Okay, Doop. and it's fun to do the punches as well. Now I'm going to take a piece. Let's go ahead and grab my pile again, what I have ready to go. I'm going to take this piece right here, and this is cut at three inches by four and a quarter. Let me double check. This is our small grid paper. If you're looking for a background paper to use in your craft room, I love the small grid because it's just so small. It's seven inches by seven inches, and you can put it with your craft stuff, um, but it also has a measuring, measuring inches on here. You can measure it any way you want. So it's three inches by four and a quarter. So on the bottom of this, I'm going to take our Knight of Navy. This is a really fun color combination for this card. It's just, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to stamp the thank you. And then also, while I have that out, I'm going to take the little sprinkles from the ice, uh, from the stamp set to add onto the top of my ice cream. You gotta have sprinkles. 
Okay, there we go. And I also want to point out that there is a popsicle um, on in the stamp set. Now the punch, this doesn't work with the punch, but you can just cut it out. And there's happy birthday, thank you, um, treat yourself. It's a very versatile stamp set. You can use it for so many different occasions. And that's what I look for when I'm um, just, when I just started out, I wanted stamp sets that were super versatile that I could use, you know, for any occasion. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to pull out my stamp and cut and emboss. And we are going to cut a shape using the Coastal Cabana cardstock and the stitched rectangle shape. Now this uh, die set, I believe it's retiring. It will, will not be in the new catalog coming out. So if you're watching this video before the end or before May 3rd, 2021, you can still purchase it. If not, you can just cut out a rectangle. You can make it work. Here is my Stampin' Cut and Emboss. Let me give you a different angle so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Now this cuts out um, any of our dies that we carry, as well as our embossing folders. You can emboss. There's so many different things to do. If you're new here, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the little notification bell. You can also look back at all of my past videos or some of them. And if you're new to paper crafting, there's quite a bit on here. And I walk you through each project step by step. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on. Now, I like to put uh, my shapes, if they have a flat edge or my dies, I put them in at an angle. And that helps it to cut a little bit better. Just gives it a little bit more pressure at the points. And I think that might have, that, I think that makes sense. <laughs> a little bit. Oops, I want to make sure that my... There we go, my plates go in straight though. Okay, so I'm just going to roll this through and set that aside. You can pull this out. Okay, so now I have a fun rectangle shape and it has these little stitches on it. Now again, if you don't have the shape, you can go ahead and just cut the rectangle out uh, just a little bit. Let me go ahead and give you a size in case you want to recreate this. Um, three and a half by four and three quarters. Okay, and I'm gonna save that for my scraps. Now we're going to go ahead and we'll take, I'm gonna set that aside for just a second. I'm going to take my paper trimmer. Now these are one of the top 10 recommended tools I suggest that you have in your craft area um, or with your craft stuff. This has a cutting blade as well as a scoring blade and it has a little arm that you can pull out. So you can go up to 17 inches, which I don't think you'd need anything that big, but just in case, you can just tuck this away. All right, we're gonna go ahead and, this is cut at five and a half by eight and a half inches, and I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. Now scoring, that's just giving you an indentation, and it helps to fold it over. But I want to score because I want to cut one and a half inches in, or from my score line, I'm going to cut over one and a half inches. So what I do is I make sure to see where my score line is. There we go. One and a half inches. I have measured it. And then I'm going to just cut it right there. So this I can put with my scraps and I can use on another fun project. So now when we fold this over, I'm sorry, that was very loud. I'm going to fold this over. It's going to look like this. And what we can do is we can take a piece of our basic white cardstock. This is cut at four by five and a quarter. And I'm just going to use our adhesive. We have two adhesives that are just for everyday crafting and scrapbooking. We have the Stampin' Seal and the Stampin' Seal Plus. I usually use the Seal Plus more than the Seal, but I know some stampers like the regular Seal. The Seal Plus is just a little bit stronger. And I'm like, yes, I want it as strong as it can be <laughs> with all of my projects. They're never coming apart. All right, so now we have this, it looks like this, and we'll start layering these up here. Let's take, we're going to take our cute little snow, it could be a snow cone, right? I was going to call it a snow cone. We're going to take our ice cream cone and I'm going to put adhesive on the back, the bottom, of the ice cream cone, put that like that. And I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to pop it up using our Stampin' Dimensionals 
If you haven't tried these yet, give them a try. They are so fun. They pop your images up. And if you don't have those yet, you can just go ahead and lay it down flat. Okay, we're gonna put this right here. It's about uh, maybe a half of an inch from the top. And now I'm going to take, this is our pool party. Even though it's not the Coastal Cabana, it coordinates with the Coastal Cabana. So I like to utilize and use our accessories uh, with different projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this. Where are my scissors? I think I just had them. I literally just had them. I don't know how they end up over on the other side of my craft room. It's very interesting to me. All right, I'm going to fold this over like this and then kind of just lay it flat so you know where it is. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of adhesive and I could have even used a little bit less of the ribbon. Now, while this is upside down, I'll go ahead and add some of the adhesive and then I'm going to add that directly onto my beautiful rectangle right here. Okay, and then now I'm going to take this and cut a little piece off and just tie a little, I'm not gonna do a bow, you can do a bow if you want, you'd have to cut a little bit more off. I'm just cutting, oops, I'm going to just do a little tie like this and push it down and then I can go ahead and Cut it a little shorter and you can also cut it at an angle if you'd like. There's so many different things you can do here. All right, so now I'll go ahead and add that on here, but I wanna make sure that I'm only adding adhesive on the left side about an inch, uh, up to about an inch in. And that's really important because you don't want it to be closed shut forever. And you also don't want it to show through. So I'm very carefully, <laughs> that'll be good. That's plenty. So I'm going to add this on here, make sure that it's um, evenly spaced. All of my borders are evenly spaced. And so now I have it, it opens like this, but we're not done. I'm going to take some of our rhinestones and I'm going to grab our take your pick tool. And this is a fun little tool and it has a spatula on it and it has a paper piercer. And then our rhinestones come in different sizes. So I'm gonna take the large one and put it in the corner up here and then I'm going to take some smaller ones and I'm just going to have them, I'm just going to make a little bit of a, I don't know what shape that is. How did I forget that? It's just going to go, you know, you know what I mean? It's going to be a corner piece. So, so there's my quick and simple video tutorial for you today. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below. I love to hear from you. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe. And you can find me, more video tutorials, my weekly giveaways, and lots of fun projects over on my website, mypinkstamper.com. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.